is why I, we I had again. to start the recording start again. again. And yeah, now but... I can share. <sighs> Man, you try to improve yeah. something. And it just you were like, I'm doing so great. Well, some more you need to improve. To everyone racers. A show designed for the world of low dollar racing and an oddball car culture. It doesn't matter what kind of limit champ or lucky track dog league you run. SECA or NASA, we won't discriminate. As long as you drive it hard and built it yourself. Join us each week for tech discussions, tips and tricks, as well as news and notes from the world of amateur endurance racing. And whether it's on the spot, tell us we were lucky enough and Chrissy, and Chrissy, Chrissy, and I give you just the tip. We're sure you'll giggle a little and even less. Everyone report to the paddock. This is Chris. This is Chrissy. I'm El Jefe. And I'm Mental. And we are Everyone Racers. Normally, we don't go for the easy ones, but in honor of our guest, it is uh, a Ford episode of our podcast. It is episode 289, a continuation of the Windsor V8. The 289 would replace the 260. During its production run from 1963 to 1968, the powered uh, it powered majority of full-size Fords, of course, the Mustang, and some of the most famous Ford race cars. Now driving your cast iron small block, check out the e one E1R bingo card hasn't been updated in a while. Maybe we should do that. No, we probably should. Yeah, but it's always a good time. But everybody gets excited when it's updated. So maybe we should do that. What you working on? Too. A good value? Why? Because mm-hmm. it's free and it provides I mean, entertainment. Sh- free <laughs> entertainment. And you never know what you can win. Nothing. Yes, you win absolutely worth nothing. Twice, <laughs> worth it at twice the price. Sure, sure. Yeah. Okay, let's move on. What you working on? Jeff can kick us off. Sure. Uh, you, many of you know what we did this weekend because many of you joined us. Uh, we met up. We met up. Sorry, Ooh, meeting up. Met up with our extended race family to trade hugs and give toasts to our teammate Aaron Lineman, who would have been forty-one years yesterday as we record this podcast. Um, we didn't give many details last week because it was kind of fresh and the family hadn't released anything yet. But we will put a link to uh, our teammate and friend Aaron's. Uh, obituary in the show notes. Uh, we know at NOLA this weekend, he was in a lot of people's hearts because there were some collections taken. Uh, we plan on doing it again in Pittsburgh. And I just want to say thank you to the uh, just many Lemons people who came out this weekend to help us say goodbye. Uh, it was a, a lot of people drove from far. A lot of people flew in. Um, I can't say enough to thank you all. Um, I guess hardcore award goes to Tom Pyrek, who drove out his fully caged minivan because Aaron would have wanted it that way. And that's just totally diesel. So thanks. Um, seriously, thank you to all who came out and helped us raise a glass or give us hugs. I know the family appreciated it and we certainly needed it. So thanks. That's what we did this weekend. I don't know what else anyone wants to add. I know mentally you haven't had a chance last week to talk. So let's throw it to you next. Uh, you know, listening to last week's show, I, I even I got a little choked up. You guys were listening on there, and it was um, <clears throat> Nola. They actually several teams donated things. Uh, Troy Hogan donated uh, an in helmet kit. Bob had a really really nice knife, and I think he was almost the bitter of his own knife that he donated, uh, and several other things that that were donated uh, for a silent auction, and uh, that was all money. That is going to Lemons of Love in Aaron's name. It was fantastic. Steve got up and gave a. Uh, uh, a nice little presentation on that. And a lot of folks that didn't know Aaron said, you know, uh, came, made it a point to come by and say, thank you. And just kind of in a bigger uh, collection of that, I was, I was racing with a, an old friend. Uh, you guys met Jerry months ago and we all raced at Barber together. And, you know, it was just, uh, we, we were reflecting on, you know, we're getting to a time when you're, you're just going to start going to more funerals and you have to start thinking about who you're going to spend your time with and, and what you're going to do. So it was a, uh, while I wasn't there in physicalness, I was there in spirit and, uh, a lot of other folks were as well. And it was, uh, it's, it, it just, it reminds you of what you value in this life and where you should be putting your efforts. There you go. Why don't you tell us about the race at NOLA? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off, Chrissy. No, I just well, it always does. Yeah. 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 We, could do that we've got that coming up in uh, recent results but the short version i was down there with uh, jerry ringle and a small collection of the inglorious bastards and an mr2 that has been rebranded so america we are calling it the swayze so we're down there doing that uh 
tested or they installed a fuel cell on there and it had some teething problems. Uh, it was a 20 gallon fuel cell and we ended up getting nine gallons out of it before we would fuel starve in corners. So it would actually worse than uh, the original one. And then uh, if you check out our Instagram, you can see what we did to the brake pads on the new Wellwood uh, calipers uh, by the uh, midpoint on Sunday. So weren't really chasing a win. We were just looking to try and shake down the car as much as possible and uh, alleviate any future problems. It was a great time, though. There you go. I suggest some uh, uh, hydromat for the future. Oh, yeah. Oh, they yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that was like, well, yep, the holly hydromat's going to have to go in. We're going to pull, it, pull the uh, cell out and do that because, yeah, it was it really, we, we were reduced to 45 minutes before you'd get fuel starvation. That's wonderful. All that work, all that expense, and it's worse. <laughs> We've never done that. <laughs> Recently. <laughs> all right. Oh, well. It's in the uh, things we've learned show. Uh -huh. Sure. Mm -hmm. Totally. All I right. Guess I'll go next. Yeah, I was go already ahead. talking. I've been doing more aluminum welding on the beach cart. I have it. It's actually like a fully contained cart right now with sides and the fold down sides. The hinges are welded on for those, and the mounts are all made for the front wheels and mostly for the um, handle to pull it around by. For those who don't know, this is a all aluminum electric powered beach cart for Chrissy's family. It is my TIG welding, learn how to TIG weld aluminum project, plus something we've been talking about building for like 15 years. So it is actually coming along fairly well. And my you, some of my welds, pictures? not right now, but some of my welds, damned if they don't look pretty damn good. And some of them, not so hot, but that's okay because the ratio is improving and that's what matters. I'm getting a little tired of hearing the exactly what it sounds right. all over the house. Yeah. Hey, you bought this thing for me and I'm making it for your parents. So. I know, but I can still complain about the sound that is going through all throughout the house. I, I hear there's a lot of married men who complain about that sound too. Let's keep moving on. <laughs> So while Chris was welding, I uh, helped run a fundraiser at our local library. Uh, and then I spent every Sunday, with, Sunday with everybody else. But I was scrambling for uh, a, a, we had a garden party. It was springtime. Ooh. And so we had tea sandwiches. And yes, I, yes. I'm, I'm drinking out. my Diet Coke with my pinky <laughs> out. out. That's what we did. I got to eat the leftover dessert. <laughs> we, I, I made the most amazing high class dirt cups for serious. I'm not even kidding. They're beautiful. Oh, words okay. not often used together. Do you know what dirt cups are? Yes, yes. It's yeah, like one, crushed up would. Oreos with worms in it. Yeah, Mental. Oh, come on. Mine were pudding. more homemade pudding that took me a couple hours to make with high class dirt on top with some beautiful. Okay, so I'm actually worms. hearing the word dirt. I thought I thought my Air Force ears were betraying me <laughs> for a second. Dirt. Because you know, high class dirt. I'm thinking, oh, she's saying dare or some da French word that dare. I have, like, no. I do didn't. say, I sometimes say things funny. No, this was, um, there were Oreos on top or Biscoff or depending on if it was vanilla chocolate. Anyway, um, I would, I'm going to, I could say what is written here, but uh, our lovely host has not said, or our lovely guest has not said anything yet. Uh, he will be authoritative and uh, comforting. This is Sajeev. He is here. What you working on? Right now, I hate to say it, but I'm working on denial because I have two dead Lincoln Continentals, one dead Ford Thunderbird and one dead Ford EXP. And you know what? Denial is a better an, place. Where did you get an EXP? Oh, yeah, I got an EXP. I'm so happy. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. Uh, now, is it, is it a no start situation in the EXP? No, it is a occasionally the carburetor, the computer controlled carburetor will decide to stop giving fuel and stop, you know, running. Uh, and so, yeah, I'm not entirely sure because, you know, this is the joy of late 80s. I'm sorry, early 80s technology that was designed in like the mid 70s. And, you know, there are vacuum lines and computers. And it's a weird combination between vacuum lines and computers. And uh, it's just fun and miserable. Yeah. So, yeah. A, bu a buddy of mine had had one in high school. That's how old I am. And yeah. uh, a, a ballpoint like Bic pen in the carburetor throat would usually get it to start. 
<laughs> just saying. I'm just saying. I'm not saying how we figured that out. Top tip. Here we go. Top tip. <laughs> this is good consumer advice. In, in, in an 80s gray Bic pen, take the cap off because you don't want that falling in. Just yeah. jam it right in there. It'll work. I can see that working. You know, I, I and anything's possible at this point. Uh, you know, all I want to, I just want to keep on driving it because people can't stop complimenting it. And a lot of people just can't understand when I correct them when I say when they say it's a Fox Mustang. And I'm like, no, count the headlights. <laughs> it has two, not four. So, you know. Yeah, they're much froggier in the EXP. Anyway, this is not everyone EXP, but that is fantastic. But, it but that's a great idea for a podcast. It kind of should be. <laughs> <laughs> I, I already know who our first guest would be. Uh-huh. Scott so. <laughs> McMichael. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, Scott exactly. McMichael. Yeah, not me. It would be Scott. Yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, Scott joined us this weekend. Give him a big yeah, hug. He was. Uh, awesome. Is it anything else in chief before I yell into the microphone and cause everybody some ear bleeding pain? Oh, no. Let's get the bleeding. News and notes time. Oh, get out. Let, look at this. Max Verstappen is whining. Oh, because That's he's right. winning. Just not enough. Aww. Look, he came in second last week. His dad clearly doesn't love him unless it's, he comes That in picture birth. is so funny. Okay. Even though he is leading the driver's championship, his car broke. Travis Okoski at Road and Track has a summary from Max. And now again, after three positive practice sessions in Jetta, uh, where then, of course, I have an issue in qualifying. Of course, I recovered to second, which is good. And in general, the whole feeling of the team, everyone is happy. But personally, I am not happy. I am not even going to make uh, a... Um, I'm not even going to use his voice here. We can we can make fun of that later. Um, in general, uh, the whole feeling... Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, because I'm not there to be second, especially when you're working very hard and also at the factory to make sure you, that you arrive here in good state and basically making sure that everyone is spot on. Travis admits that uh, Max has always been there to win titles and has proven so, but he also adds that the cars are not finishing... Uh, not even finishing last year when Verstappen would be the champion and set the record for most races and win in a season. It seems like one of us predicted uh, this on a recent episode. I mean, yep. he's going to, he's going to win, but he's annoying. And yep. Yeah. I, I can't defend him. Don't expect me. To I defend think him. everybody's over as him. the Red Bull fan in the room. I'm not going to expect. Right? And then there's Checo's <laughs> oh. dad who just seems to be legitimately overjoyed by anything that Checo does. Just great. <laughs> including so nice. sleeping with Max's girlfriend. I'm sticking. I'm sticking with that one. <laughs> yeah. I will keep. I will keep perpetrating that rumor. All right. So, hey, in the lemons wrap up video for Barber, it's mentioned that if you are in Texas or several other locations in the South and don't have a theme, the answer is to just find a Bucky's, and that's because they have everything. And actually, the first time I went to a Bucky's, I was down in Florida, and I told Chrissy about it. I said, imagine a cross between. Shady Maple, which is an Amish smorgasbord I love kind of store that we have here, uh, and Wawa, and Cracker Barrel, <laughs> and that's what Bucky's is. <laughs> Our Texan is laughing. <laughs> I was gonna say, <laughs> Sajib, you're Houston, assessment. right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, I stand I, by that. I saw Bucky's many years ago, and it's still, you know, it's the place to be when you're in the middle of nowhere. That's how I like to say it. Mm -hmm. I mean, the wall totally. of jerky is pretty amazing. Yeah. Also, when yeah. you fall in love with something and you're from the East Coast and you can never get it again, you're just like, that's a shame. Maybe I can Stock order up it on jerky. Ooh. Anyway, uh, so Elizabeth Blackenstock at Jalopnik adds, hey, you can also buy your groceries, feast like a king on freshly made food, fill your closet with beaver-themed attire, and even nab furniture for your home. Now the Texas-based lifestyle chain can add a fossil named to its impressive list of services. Science at the University of Texas recently discovered an old beaver fossil tucked away in a filing cabinet as it was lost in a name that is officially known as Anchithromus Anchithriomus buckii, bucky, whatever. Bucky's got a fossil. If it was German, <laughs> I could pronounce it. It's English stuff. It's terrible. Anyway. Do we know what this fossil is? The beaver. Because yeah, Bucky's a, it's a an beaver. Ex, it's Bucky yeah, it's beaver. An extinct, it's an extinct species of beaver that oh, they got forgot it. to okay. name and left in a filing cabinet. That That's great. Yes. <laughs> uh, Sajeev, how, how close are you to the nearest Bucky's right now? 
Uh, there's one west of me, probably a good, I'm going to say 15 miles. Not too far, actually. Not too far. It's actually, it was the closest. Now it's the second closest place for me to get uh, non-ethanol fuel. So, yeah, uh, I did. I do enjoy the Buckies. Wait, wait, in Texas, they sell ethanol fuel? No, no, no. Think about it. Houston is the capital of oil and gas. All the oil and gas companies move here. We have this whole area called the Energy Corridor. But no, E10 everywhere except for one place within Houston city limits, city limits and Bucky's. That's the irony here. Who knew they would put corn in your gasoline in Texas? Uh, I mean, it, it just, it just feels like it just, it, it feels like we're un-American in the most American part of the world. I just, I, I... <laughs> anyway, let me give my story out here. We'll get back to you in a minute. Vegas, Miami and Atlantic city. What do these things have in common? They don't really, but Peter Holbrook. They're all pretty terrible. Yeah, yeah. Holdreth at the drive outlines a proposed $2.7 billion quote F1 style racetrack, housing, and shopping center. It will be on the site of the closed Atlantic City Municipal Airport uh, called Bader Field. You like Master. It was unanimously approved by the city council last week. The developer. D-E-E-M, Dem Enterprise, claims that the residents of Atlantic City won't be disturbed by the racing because it will be mostly electric cars that will be competing there because he's only going to sell to people who, like, have Teslas. That's what he said. The 2.5-mile track, 1,000 housing units, and 234,000 square feet of retail and commercial space that will involve landfilling parts of the back... doesn't this doesn't sound remotely like a scam right uh construction should take six to nine years to complete which is their words not mentals as he wrote this down a spokesperson for the developer was quoted saying the track will be from quote the world's foremost designer from spain but didn't say who that designer was can can i i'm gonna go on a little rant here but this is right where near where i work it's the current home to the South Jersey SCCA autocrossing and where I most recently failed to try this lousy sport. Uh, it's a plot of land filled with mosquitoes over a marsh that is gifted to some new startup just about every other year. I looked it up and it has been proposed by different groups in the last couple of years for building homes, building an esports arena, a private jet airport, at one point, of course, in a, a casino, really any fool who shows up to a meeting was like, I have the greatest idea and I have a ton of investors. Please give me the land. They give it to them. And then like three years later, they give it to somebody else. So I'll believe it when I see it, but we're going to link it in the show notes because what the hell you might as well dream with us. Yep. Fair enough. Yep. Good luck. Ah. Uh. At one point, Somebody some guy said, yeah, right. I was going to say, at one point, some guy said he was going to build a <clears throat> genius factory. <laughs> and when they um, interviewed him about it, he talked about, you know, the kind of place where uh, he used the racist language. He was from Georgia, where people free white and 21 can all get together and do things like learn how to transport people from like in Star Trek. And they were like, Okay, we said we were going to give it to you, but now we take it back, and they took it back. <laughs> this looks like a lame track. Uh, it's an airport, I, so it's actually I'm, yeah. Go ahead. I mean, it's it's Atlantic City is pretty flat. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're not looking at any any. I mean, not that Las Vegas is not any better, but um, it's pretty darn flat here. Also, um, I'm Las pretty Vegas sure this is better than Atlantic City in every measurable. Way. I mean, <laughs> I don't know about the every beach is a little bit better. That this much better in Atlantic City. Mm. Actually, the ocean. <laughs> the ocean is better in Atlantic City. That's yeah. Right. It, right. When they say F1 style, that's clearly something the developer used. But when they talk about it, it really sounds like it's more like a club track. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, I feel like it, this is somebody uh, had a really good time with um, SimCity. Yeah. And <laughs> and they basically, you know, like legit, that's what it looks like. Somebody played SimCity and like dropped a couple of bunch of things here and said, oh, people will move into these things. And like, oh, this, this is, is a commercial zone. Trick. Yeah. I'm a right. racetrack designer now. I play yeah. SimCity. Yeah. It's probably a 16 year old that's playing SimCity. So just you uh, should look I, at it. Now, now I. 
I have to show everybody what this looks like. <laughs> Give me a moment. Let me share some screen here. Sorry, I know we were trying to move absolutely on. Absolutely silly. Th this no, one no, just. Yeah, yeah. I did really... not consider the Simpson. It's, yeah, and, and it's 100% accurate. I'm pretty sure somebody could turn it around and they said, let me, let me put a little boardwalk here and a little, uh, there's some ocean like view city. condos. Oh, yeah, crime over across. in this area. Oh, wait, no, it's all the way at the top. It's at the top. Go, go, go. The it's top, there. top. No, it disappeared. You're on what action news. I don't know. Yeah, I know. Wrong link, Jeff. Uh, scroll wrong slowly. No, scroll slow. No, it's there. It's there. There, scroll. there it is. That's what I'm looking for right there. No, you're going, you scroll down slowly past the video. There it there is. There it is. Okay. There it is. Oh. oh, okay. This is the worst podcast oh, ever. The worst podcast. <laughs> Click on the link in the show notes. Click in the show notes. That, Google it you. yourself. Or it's don't because it's dreams. terrible. Yeah. Move on. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh. What else are we got going? So in honor of our guest and his widely known fondness for the Blue Oval, we present in our sponsor section this neat lovely ford foci there yep. it is folky you <laughs> this 2005 ford focus obviously it's four wheel disc brakes it's five it's got a five point racing harness it's got a cage seats brake cooling ducts rain race slicks and rain tires the guy ran it at road america and blackhawk farms in the spring and it's got a cage if you're going to try and lemons it it looks a little um sus looks like very uh, dirt tracky kind of a cage um i would not want to have to climb out of it in a hurry ever ever <laughs> so oh, no. wow yeah those nascar bars <laughs> mm. <laughs> well you just so, cut the top one off and you'll probably yeah, yeah, yeah this is yeah, this yeah, is like definitely said, a, a circle crazy. track kind of deal you weren't actually meant to get out of that car <laughs> but at the same time, I mean, you know, it's, 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 it's probably a very well-built cage and the guy's been tracking this thing for a while. Uh, it's in Wisconsin and it is only $7,500 because you can always find a track toy and anything else you might need to go racing at racingjunk.com. And while you're there, go ahead and sign up for their pro level membership. It's only $25, which is more than half off. If you use the code pod 23, all right, go there. I, I spend an obscene amount of time. I just moved desk. And now like the two guys in my office are like, are you looking for yet another $500 car? Cause I'm always on racing junk, looking for cool stuff. I like racing junk.com. It like, makes me happy. It'll make you happy too. They're not all $500. Every time, every once in a while, we find a really cool thing and it's really a lot of money. And you're just like, that was really cool. I could yeah. buy it. Which, the, what, yeah, like which, the trailer. <laughs> which motor is this? It's an NA, right? It's a Duratec. Duratec, yeah, okay. Duratec. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, basically the same as what's in our Mazda. Yeah, I think you'd have a good chance with a Duratec, more to like any of the turbo Fords. I think. I think that's actually a good rally cross car. You get that little cheapo lift kit on it, and mm. boom. Ooh, yes. Okay, you know, so starting a new hobby for it too. Yep. Yeah, that Take thing would that's... kill, and that thing would kill in rally cross. I bet. Bam! There you go. All okay. right, get yourself get yourself a killer rally cross car. Check out some other stuff. You get like early access to listings, all kinds of cool stuff. Racingjunk.com. Save some money. We love it's it. It's worth your money. It really, seriously, it's 25 bucks. You, I, I, I will spend that on like a bar tab. It, you, know, <laughs> people. you can't afford not to save at that point. Right? Yeah, yeah there it is. Upcoming races. Upcoming P Pacific Northwest at the Ridge. There is 33 cars. That's very sad. Aww. One lone BMW. <laughs> Two Miatas, also great. Two Hondas, no Porsches. And what Eric Rude calls Stellantis All-Stars, which is an Intrepid, a Jeep, X19, Neon, 505, and a Milano. And there's also a Daewoo, a 47 Chevy, two Austins, and a Paseo. That's Having an equal lineup. number of Daewoo's and BMW's means we're they're doing it correctly. <laughs> uh out of the Stellantis All Stars, which one would you hate the most to do a session in? Intrepid, Ooh. a Jeep, an X19, a Neon, a 505, oh, the, and a Milano. The Intrepid. Yeah. I'm going with 505. It's it's gonna be a soft French car. I bet the Intrepid would just clean its clock. Oh, which probably so comfortable. You would, sure. yeah, you would hate it. Yeah. You'd fall, you'd uh, fall asleep while you're driving the 505. Eat a baguette. <laughs> That's true. But, but in, in 
every one of those cases, save for one, you move over because you want to hear that Milano come by you and rewind out that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Last time I was in a neon, it lasted about 10 minutes and I blew it up. So I don't want that one. Uh, (laughs) Chip car will be at Daytona for a 14 hour race. 138 cars, 27 of them, BMW. Oh, oh that's mm. I don't know if this is worse or not. 32 Miatas. Oh. Oh. Mm. Nine Hondas, 12 Porsches, and the aptly named What's the Rush Racing in a Ford Escort ZX2. Good for them. <laughs> the EXP of the 90s. That's right. Fantastic. Also, a, 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 if I if I'm not mistaken, a known choice for hypermilers. They all love to get the EXP because it already has a great shape, and then they start taping over some of the uh, the panel gaps and that kind of stuff, and put skinny, really really skinny tires on them, and try to see how much how much gas mileage they can get out of them by drafting know. semis. Yeah, maybe they, they they do have a big wing, and the and you know people were doing aerodynamic testing back then, so possibly, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like an 89, maybe, you know, when they were like five years old. But I think all the hypermilers have like first gen insight nets now, right? Yeah, like now, they, now, now the they like boat is tail them. Yeah. Yeah. You want an insight because of the fender skirts and the tail. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that uh, way, like it's a super thin roof and aluminum. John Pagel's got one of those things. Oh, uh, yeah. Hey, but yeah. you still get a stick in it. It can be fun. True. Yeah. yeah. K swap it. That's right. <laughs> And recent results all right our guest was just judging at nola before we jump into these results sajib what what was your favorite story from this weekend because I, I i we know that the penalty box was remarkably boring so boring uh now that i'm, I'm not going to compliment the lemons racers about that i think it was more just the laws of attrition and there was enough space between all the cars that no one was black flagging uh that was nice um i don't know probably probably the most memorable moment was when class b was handed to the class b winner from the guy who died from the car who died um it was a sob 9000 late like a 2004 five oh, oh, the, the, the the red balls sorry, the, the, the nine the, three yeah yeah it's a nine three sorry not nine thousand nine three um these guys were in character all the time i met them like even when they're talking to their friends they were talking like tyrone biggums from uh uh from the Chappelle show like literally while i'm judging them they're going like you know like, y'all got some crack y'all got some crack <laughs> and i mean and literally on the door it says t biggums and the american flag like that's the guy who's driving the car and i was like you know what i kind of want these guys to win and i wasn't expecting them to to run away with the with with class b and they were until like i don't know the last 25 minutes or so and then and, saw you know, GM'd. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, as a judge, I don't get, I don't necessarily get to see what's going on on the track because you usually have to be at the judging area. Next thing I know, I see a sob going at a pretty high, high rate of speed, a pretty decent clip into the paddock. He was away from everyone else. So I, I was like, I, I'm, I'm not really worried about it. And he's like, he's like, probably, he's going well over the speed limit, but he's going all over the speed limit on three wheels. I see, I see a wheel and a rotor go by and I'm like, well, I guess he's not going to win the race. And, <laughs> and uh, you know, I almost wanted to give him an I got screwed penalty. Uh, I'm sorry, the I got sp- screwed uh, award. But he decided to put his car in a trailer and leave. I'm like, well, you're not going to get it then. He could, must be present. But, uh, you know, I don't know how long he was driving on the track on three wheels and one rotor. Uh, but, you know, that's just lemons in a nutshell, man. <laughs> I did notice on their, uh, they had a wing on the back of it and it was red balls. They had all the, yeah. uh, the, and it said red ball gives you wang with a, you know, three A's and an NG written on their wing. That was pretty funny. Yeah. Uh, they seem like, they seem like nice enough guys. I, I feel bad for them, but, uh, apparently losing the wheel, probably they probably, they probably, they probably, they probably just wanted to get out. <laughs> Everyone no else fun. knows better. Yeah. The other guys come by and go, is there a reason I should stay until the yeah. award? <laughs> <laughs> I've done that. <laughs> exactly. It, it, it takes us longer to pack usually than it does for the awards. So unless yeah. you go out, like if you go out on the last day, why are you leaving? 
Anyway. We're bad at packing quickly, especially some <sighs> parts of our team more than others. True. Anyway. All right. Anyway, um, so go ahead. Overall, NA was onset slash tetanus in a Heck boring yeah. but newly built BMW E30. So uh, poorly done on the car, but um, poorly done on the win, too. That's great. I, yeah. I um, believe this is their first overall win, according to the Facebooks. It's it's the first overall win, and really? one of the guys on the team, Troy Hogan. Uh, we know Troy very well. We, we had I, Troy on the show years ago. Oh, yeah, yeah. To talk in about two, radio in, stuff. In 2008, we built one of the first lemons car one of the first lemons cars for texas in houston at the first msr race and if it wasn't for troy and his z car you know who knows if i would have done anything with lemons um and it was great and he has not won well he's won ioe and some other stuff like that but he's never got an overall win until now so you know good things come to those who wait maybe or <laughs> I, I don't know <laughs> The, I'm not the sure best, what the more of the story here is, but uh, oh, the, at least he the best won. part about the best part about winning it overall is then you can stop trying for a while. It's, and so relax. Nice. it's yep. really great. It's really nice when that happens. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. You All went right. to college, Troy, didn't you? Yeah. Um, definitely interesting. Anyone who knows Troy knows that college with Troy would be very, very interesting. Okay. I'll keep moving on from that one then. Um, <laughs> Class B was Swampfoot in their 94 Subaru Impreza, which amazingly blew up less often than the Saab that it was leading. That's a, that's something. Uh, Class C was the Cleverly Hillbillies in their cost 130000 when new 93 Mercedes 600 SEC. Well done. Oh. Or, oh, that's it for me. Chris, okay. Or <laughs> choice was first light search racing in a Miata. Coast Guard, which is a Coast Guard team who organized a flyover for the race start. That's pretty awesome. It really was. Yeah. Uh, ju judges uh, went to a, a Escape Velocity Racing celebrating their 10th anniversary and their 60 in their 64 Dart. And I got screwed, went to Red Balls in a 08 Saab 93. Or at least that was on the website. Who'd you guys end up giving it to? Oh, maybe we did. I just... I, yeah. I was doing I was doing the other ones and I and I didn't do I didn't I I did the IOE and and, and a few of the other ones so yeah I, I maybe they did stick around good for them <laughs> All right. who knows heroic fix was the previewed seventy six Mo Foco Pac Man Focus I, uh, and I hate to be this. rude yeah so he came by and saw and what was we saw the focus what we didn't see until I was at the track they all had shirts with the different ghost on them. And when they oh, turned their good. backs, all of them were blue. Oh, nice. that's that fun. Is, that's nice. good. Oh, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. It was a Attention great to detail. Theme. That's so, nice. So I actually almost shared this picture on the podcast like three weeks ago because I didn't know it wasn't supposed to be shared. And then you're like, don't share. Don't. So we did see this early and have some discussions about, you know, do you play like the regular Pac-Man song out of the speakers from the video game? Or do you play like Pac-Man fever? Or I don't know. Yeah, nothing but work. work, work that was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the regional trophy, the four speeds of Daryl Memorial highest finisher equipped with a Doug Nash 4.3 transmission trophy. Chris and Chrissy, don't you have a Doug Nash 4.3? We sure do. <laughs> Went to FSU Racing in an 84 vet. I try to had forget that I have more one. than one with a Doug Nash 4.3. No, 4 I just think this is this is the best any of them have ever done. Oh, I've ever done ever. Okay, I'll get <laughs> They're that. terrible. Yeah. <laughs> uh, IOE was the awesome Purolator, the Urinator, a 75 Mercury Montego, who also took home Road Mangler eBay Halloween meets gasoline trophy was the LS 10 racing and their great Mardi Gras theme complete with a parade and a jambalaya in the potluck on Saturday. They had it a was delicious. A yeah, it was fantastic. Oh yeah. Great. I was waiting for you, Chrissy. Now you do feedback time. The, on the YouTubes, Michael K said, the bearing pack that hooks to your grease gun is a game changer for those of us that are constantly using a grease gun. Like he said, he's a tractor runner. Despite Jeff's comments, the Lyle 65 250 and cheaper than the 34 or 550 hand packer work just as well. Bonus, it means your gun is loaded with the same grease as the bearing for the one to four pumps in the bearing buddy between each race in addition to the yearly real inspection and packing. 
great. Oh, okay. He added, best thing I ever did is carry two spare mounted tires. Most expensive tire you'll ever buy is a trailer tire on Sunday with a 600 mile tow home facing you and a lost tire. You And you lost the tire, the pri- tire, the prior day. Tire, prior, lots of things in there. Sorry. That's a heck of a tongue twister. Uh, the Stankinator said, uh, save one or a few of those Aaron stickers for me, please. I loved iRacing with him and really want, wanted to meet him at the track. I'm sure he was even more fun in person. That he was. Yeah. And Al Jones inspired an IG post with, quote, I'm terribly disappointed that mental was unavailable for the trailer episode. Now, how will I ever know how to construct a tall enough ladder to climb on my stolen moon trailer and visit the Ozobiel that's been up there for nine months? And that stung a little bit, but it did ins- because it's uh, we true. Used- it is true, and we we use that as an inspiration for an IG post that inspired other comments. Uh, DJ nine fourteen said that rear left wheel looks like it may not be all the right way. Uh, for this trailer, perhaps build an earthen ramp. That that could work. I like that idea. It's like a bank uh, barn. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> for a trailer. For Pennsylvania people. Uh, yeah. Jim B <laughs> says, I'm not sure an agricultural hay bale trailer is rated for highway use, but send it. Send I don't know. It. <laughs> Chris has liked the Omega. Olds Omega is a properly rad race car, though. Kind of amazing. It is a properly rad race car. Uh, and Carl Ace, saw, once seeing the picture, said, that's even worse than I had imagined. The tunk angle looks ridiculous. And uh, give me a second here, because I think I might be able to actually dig up the uh, the photo, just so Sajid doesn't have to sit here confused. This is what happens when you, you trade have... trailers with a, <laughs> right? a, a uh, meth dealer a, a that who meth said dealer they, who has a <laughs> that your trailer is better than his. At 11 and now you have... in the dark. And now you have a stolen moon trailer. I yeah, probably. <laughs> I like but that. Hey, it, it got the job done. All right. Um did it really though? About- did it really well it got Can the you Omega get the car home. down? <laughs> you can't get the car down. The, the, Omega's the, there. the job was to get the car back. And good, good. To that end, it it did. All right. Oh, uh good. let's see if I can dig this up. Here we are. Here is uh available on our Instagrams for your viewing pleasure. Uh the F150 <laughs> that is in there. Uh Sajeev, I don't know if you can see that, but that's the yeah. uh it's Corey Dickman's uh old uh Omega that I bought. Oh yeah. And and I ended up with this trailer literally the night before I went to go get it. And you can see that it's like even with the top of the bed. The Lynn There's- Moon trailer. <laughs> yeah. Now you can't get the car off. Now, now we don't know that it's stolen. Oh We're no, but it's funnier to sure say. That it's <laughs> the story there, goes well with the car. There, there is <laughs> no less ownership paperwork on that trailer than there was for the other one. No, but at least we <laughs> knew the 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 the. The other one was full of jank. Of history of full of jank. Well, this but it was legalish. Oh, uh, you so know who? What what what, uh, what happens to Jeev is uh, I'm literally gathering a trailer to go and meet Corey and get this car, and the janky half magic trailer I bought from Jeff from me. one of the one of the wheels locked up and is sliding down Las Vegas Boulevard just outside the base. I pull into a parking lot. I just pull that wheel off. I'm like, all right, I'll rebuild the brake. I'll just stay up all night and 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 I'll go. And as I'm sitting at a stoplight, a guy on a bicycle like flags me down and goes, Hey, do you want to trade trailers? And it's, it's <laughs> and 1130. He's like, yes, no problem. I'm, I'm in North Las Vegas, which is, you know, not the best part of town. And I'm like, you don't want this thing. He's like, no, dude, I really, really do. So I follow him to his apartment complex and that trailer is there. And we traded straight up the next day, but it had four wheels. And I drove all the way to Bakersfield, put a car on it and drove it home. That was nine months ago. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus is just shaking his head like, yeah, stolen from a meth guy. It's cool. It's different, time. <laughs> we gotta sh- different time we got to show you the pictures of getting that trailer on or getting that car onto that trailer. Because yeah, it's, um, it was sketch. Was sketch. sketch. <laughs> you know who has a title for every trailer that they own? <laughs> How Chrissy's car? mom. Car Chrissy's too. Mom. 
Sure. Yeah. All zero trailers that she owns. It's good. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, uh, one thing we, we missed, though, right now is mental li- live oh, listener live feedback. Listener feedback. You I'm were sorry. here last week. I didn't mean it. <clears> so so our, uh, uh, I, I loved that early on because you guys got through all the early stuff. You're like, man, we are just absolutely blasting through it's this. True. It's true. Without, without mental. And then as soon as we get into the technical part, the show stretches right back out to 90 plus minutes. Yep. 93 <laughs> minutes every time. It's exactly but where we're at. Here's the thing. I know you. You guys are my friends and I still learn something. So there's that's there you go. Yeah. That's are right. you gonna do anything with your trailer that we suggested last week to do to your trailer? With Oh, I will do all those things to the trailer, just not the one we just showed. Not that the moon trailer. Just go to the another, junkyard. <laughs> we trade it to another, to another meth, meth addict. Meth yeah. Exactly. Maybe That's you could trade it for something better this time. You'd be like, do you want yeah. this cool trailer I got? It's like, it's like it's that really, training show like a, you, where somebody starts with a paperclip and then they like 30 <laughs> trades oh. later, they get like I, a house. I figure this is, it's, it's going to be the, uh, the, the Jack and the Beanstalk. You guys will check it on me in three months. Like, you know, oh man, so what'd you happen? Well, I traded for that and I traded for that. And now I have a pen. Yeah, this is going backwards. <laughs> At some point, he's going to be the guy. Well, I got this paperclip now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Hey, before we get to the main topic, I want to do another shout out. Uh, Chrissy's mom's cookies were really appreciated at the uh, post Aaron event. Uh, and many people were like, oh, cookies it's not even a race i know i asked her uh nicely she said of course she would be happy to honor i think even and uh i said it's not a 3 p.m party without it and uh aaron was one of um her loved her favorite biggest fans biggest fans yes so me topic time all right i put this with an exclamation point on purpose it's sajeev yes now if you're a gulf coast racer you already know our guest judge Saviv. What you may not know is that he is a senior editor and content and community administrator for Haggerty Magazine. That's their online and their print magazine. He is also a design expert, having written for Haggerty and the truth about cars regarding design elements and entire automotive design. We'll have a link to one of those in the show notes. And he actually explains automotive design terms. Uh, Fellow mid-century modern architect, nerd next time you're in vegas i know i missed you when you're out here before i'm going to take you on a tour of all of the mcm houses about four miles from here around the las vegas national golf course yes. that's frank's house that's debbie reynolds house where carrie fisher was born all that they have all of that laid out it's fantastic he is a fan of brutalist architecture and we're going to ask you to explain that in a little bit you are an expert on houston slab culture and indeed brought it to the world we'll talk about that Many, anyone who's known you, including all of your Texas friends, consider you a true son of the Republic. You love Houston, and a lot of people know you're a Ford enthusiast, but they don't know how much. I got a glimpse into how much Sajeev loves Fords. I'm telling you, it's more than I love Mercedes. It's more than Jeff's loves internationals. It's it's deep. All right. Uh in we've 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 talked a couple times. We worked together, and I've just been down to Houston either racing or judging. And you're kind of, you were kind of an unintentional pioneer in effective online marketing for a family of dealerships down there. Like not just, you know, web pages, but actually e-commerce and, and getting them to actually sell. And you were doing like one of the first people to know, oh, here's how you make money with the internet. Uh, what were you see? So you play drums. You and Jack had a, uh, great, uh, uh, was a <clears throat> contest on Haggerty where you guys could rent a hot rod Lincoln. Yeah. <laughs> and what, what, what else am I missing? <laughs> you know, you, you, if, you if, I, could, if I could, if I yeah, could, really. sell, if I could sell myself for what you, for what you hyped me up for, I'd be a very <laughs> rich man. That's all I can say, man. That was, that was, I'm, I'm blushing. That is amazing. <laughs> Mental like many, uh, uh, freelance writers gets paid by the word. Yeah. yeah. Mental don't write no more. Sorry. That is yeah. true. I know the Mental truth is in a the way of a good story. Yeah. Mental is a sellout government contractor. There you go. <laughs> I, I was hoping you were going to introduce him with his last name because Sajeev's last name and Josh's best friend's last name is the same. Oh. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Are we Great. keeping it hidden? Mr. Mayta, oh, go for it. No, oh, there you go. Here it is. On the there, there, I, I, I didn't know if I was supposed to let the cat out of the bag or not, but yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. 
Uh, and yeah. it's it's interesting. Her father is a big muckety muck engineer who works for Rowan University, who designs roadways. He's a civil engineer, and he has a machine that like scrubs asphalt to make it better. Wow. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, we're here to talk about. Oh, sorry. Did, did, no, it's, I'm sorry. Did Go Mental on. forget anything with your soliloquy up there? No, no, no. I I just want to make the joke to Jeff that you know. Like 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 most people who talk about Indian people around me, they're always talking about engineers and doctors, and they're not talking about me. And, you know, <laughs> well played. It's, he's it's just, he's I, a college I, professor, so it's yeah, just the same, right? I, I just feel like I'm at I'm at I'm at any I'm at any family gathering. Thank you so much for making me feel alone. <laughs> uh, he's married to a doctor. <laughs> Yeah, are you the doctor? No, I'm not the doctor. <laughs> that's that's yeah, my it, brother. It's, I'm it's, sorry. Yeah, and, and in your family, oh yes, uh, he's the one who's not a doctor and an engineer. And in Texas, they're all like, oh my god, he's like the most Texas guy ever. Drives a Ranger and he plays <laughs> drums. It's awesome. <laughs> I remember when me and Eric were getting booed because Eric is, of course, a Sox, White Sox fan, and I said something about the Braves, and finally, like, all right, look, here's someone who actually roots for the Astros, and yeah. <laughs> oh boy chrissy save us with a question sure i'm happy to i just waiting for so this far thing. off the rails till this whole thing stops here okay tell me about brutalist uh architecture i'm trying to follow what does it have to do with cars and car design start let's start there so i guess i'm really lucky that haggerty let me basically go on a on a sabbatical like a real college professor who could be an engineer like someone whose name made a uh sort of kind of like that i basically got to drive a the new hyundai ionic 5 which is a very square boxy kind of 8-bit minecraft looking car and because i had i had this idea that i could take it to a a a, a town that's like an architectural mecca and compare the two and that was a very stressful couple of weeks or months or whatever it took, however it took to to make that to make that article but uh a lot of good positive things from it. So apparently I know how to put architecture in terms of cars. The Hyundai made it very easy because it's literally littered with architectural influences everywhere. That's the uh, backstory of this. So brutalist, brutalist architecture, it's actually great for car people because if you like parking garages, you probably love brutalist architecture uh, because it's it's basically pouring concrete into whatever shape you want and then you make it into something, be it components like a big big bricks or, or small bricks or literally pouring something pouring some crazy shapes out of out of nowhere uh if you're near a college campus odds are there's a brutal there's a piece of brutalist architecture somewhere on campus that was built in the 70s uh and you know it's amazing because as a design snob uh you know mental said i'm a design person and design snobs seem to like brutalist architecture because you can kind of do whatever you want you're not tied by gothic columns or you know half naked baby angels with wings or we you know whatever has to be on your building you just pour concrete wherever you want it to be poured and then it turns into that shape forever and that's kind of really awesome and we were talking about this before everyone joined on here i think chris was subject to this jeff is going to appreciate this but sajeev actually had a Brutalist architecture dad joke. So for, I apologize, it's bad podcasting, but it's excellent YouTubing. So yes. that is a picture of a poured concrete bar. And if you look at Sajeev's comment, oh, yeah, I hope they only serve hard liquor there. Oh, I got seven likes from other brutalist nerds, though. So <laughs> clearly I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Yeah, there's a great 99 pi on brutalism and it's yes, not, it's love not that it's it's yeah. not that it's brutal like oh man that's brutal it's there's there's a guy that made that right well no I, actually well i might as well be actually clear and, and not rambling about cars and me and whatever brutalism is is based on a french french words baton brut and i'm sure i'm saying that incorrectly but it's basically uh Actually, I forgot exactly what those two words mean. It's basically it's basically like formed or shaped concrete. And so it even though the, the architecture looks like some like evil palace in some sci-fi sci dystopian nightmare, uh, it's actually just about concrete being what it is in French. 
And everyone who's driven up I-95 in Connecticut has seen the brutalist building right next to the Ikea that is now actually an environmental. Oh, the, oh, the hotel, yeah. the Pirelli, the yeah. Pirelli uh, thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm such yeah. A brutalist, I'm such a brutalist nerd. I want to go there and stay at that hotel <laughs> and walk around the Ikea and eat some meatballs. And I'll be like so brutalist and European. That'd be awesome. Don't just eat the meatballs. The best part there is if you go across the street to the waterfront, there is an amazing food truck row. Yeah. Taco trucks. Yeah, all taco truck. the taco oh, wow. trucks. And like legit ones. Um, That hotel just opened in the last Recently, year or yeah. two, oh, I last think. Year or so. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it was abandoned for like Ikea bought that property. And they're like, well, we, we need it for our shopping and we need it for the huge parking lot. What are we going to do with this thing? And then it was apparently listed so they couldn't they couldn't take it down. So yeah, yeah, I think they call it the Hotel Marcel because Marcel, I forgot his last name at the top of my head. He's the guy who made it. He's he's an Good. architect of the era uh, who, you know, concrete I'll brutalism. I'll take a picture for you next time we drive by in three weeks. Nice, yeah. Um, I once interviewed, I work, I'm a college professional. I'm not a college professor, but I worked at, I interviewed at UMass Amherst and UMass Amherst's entire campus is brutalist, poured concrete, every single building yes I, I know that well okay the reason i'm agreeing with you guys all this is because i follow this this group on facebook called the brutalism appreciation society <laughs> i bet you do yeah there there's a, when i went there the, the college tour they're like you know this place was built by satanists right and they're like if <laughs> you go thing. to the if you go to the clock tower there's benches like these poured concrete benches that look like sixes and there's three of them and that's proof that everything and there's like oh jesus i gotta get out of here this place is crazy anyway speaking of getting out of here yes um let, let, I, i'm a jersey boy i'm gonna get, get us back to cars here i'm enamored with car culture that i don't see here in jersey carolina squat donk racing at sema i was all over that bozuzuku digibon all of this and I learned all about slabs by reading your stuff. I've seen the punishment videos in the wrap up. I, I, I read the article you wrote way back when. What do I need to know about Swang and how can I do it here? How Probably other people didn't read the article like me. Give us a brief explanation on slab culture and what, what's happening in the world these days. Well, slab culture literally started because probably in 80, the, the, the the, the legend has it that 83 in 1983 and 1984, it, one or two or maybe all of the Cadillac dealerships here in Houston, they were catering to, you know, the, the rich oil types of the time. They would outfit their Eldorados and Seville's or whatever, pro, mostly just Eldorados because personal luxury car. With, they would ditch the fake wire wheels because that's what that's what a lot of them were. And they and they'd add real Kragar. Uh, like spokes. Wheels. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I I can't remember exactly what, what the name of they're called. There's some spoke something, um, and of course you have to have Vogue tires with that because this is a Cadillac dealer because that's what you do, and it turned into a thing with, you know, I, I can't say I'm part of the slab culture from back in the day because I I grew up in a I grew up in a neighborhood that was tangentially connected to it. So even though I've seen it, I can't I can't like take any credit. I can't take any credit for me being there. But uh, it's basically the people who could afford them back in the '90s. They would take them off these old Cadillacs and they'd put them on whatever with adapters and spacers and whatever. And it turned into a serious cultural, cultural thing for parts of Houston that I didn't grow up in. And I had a friend who, who, who owned a Monte Carlo with, with those wheels on there. And he did sell things of a certain persuasion that were not legal and <laughs> or it's quickly becoming legal across the United States. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, actually that, yeah, actually now the, the stuff he is, the stuff he is, he sold what is, is now legal, but I was like, how can you afford those wheels? He's like, dude, you don't know what I do. And I'm like, Oh, that's why you have guys all around you. <laughs> I was like, Oh, that's why no one messes with your Monte Carlo. Cause like I have a Lincoln, I have a, a Lincoln Continental that I'm restoring to this day. And people would mess with that car when I had it in high school, but yeah, no one touched his Monte Carlo. Um, but uh, yeah, it was a thing where, you know, it was a life or death thing to have these wheels. They were that hot. But then sometime in the 2000s, uh, whatever I remember in my article, I don't, I don't remember exactly what I wrote, uh, a company called Texan Wire Wheels, which is ironically based in Beverly Hills, California. Boo. <laughs> uh, they, they've, they've contracted with someone in California to make to reproduce those those Craig R wheels. 
there's an 84 wheel from 1984. Apparently the spokes kind of go down in a V. The 83, they kind of go down in an H. Uh, yeah, and that's that's uh, those are my two new friends that I met th thanks to the Haggerty article. And I think both of those have 84s on them, the way the wheels pinch, the way the spokes po pinch inward. Um, yeah, that's a, a very nice guy who let me who, who let me into the community, even though even though uh, he had no reason to. It was really cool of him. Um, so slabs are basically take GM sedans or there's there's a small folk, small group of folks who like Lincoln, who like Lincoln town cars and do what you see there. They, you put the you put the Kragar wheels. These are the reproductions. You put Vogue, Vogue tires on it. You do all the neoclassic stuff which I've seen everywhere from Florida to Boston back in the eighties. And, you know, it's just a thing now in Houston. I I've seen cars that were the hot deal from some, you know, some guy who, who probably died in Florida and they wind up in Houston with a new life. Um, you know, it's, it's the whole Zimmer culture. Uh, if anyone knows who Zimmer, what about Zimmer cars? Um, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. But I, I guess I guess the funny thing now that I realized once I once I wrote this this article for the magazine, sorry, not wrote I co-wrote and researched and whatever. Anyway, yeah, I can't take credit for it for the whole thing. Uh, was that uh, there's it's been going on for uh, a little over thirty years now. So there's actually multi generations of slab enthusiasts. Like I'm old school. I want like seventies to nineties full-size rear-wheel drive car V8, that's a proper slab. That's what you put it on there. And now, because that company is reproducing them and they're reproducing them in crazy lengths, the longest ones I think are, uh, they're, they're over 18 inches long and poke, they call it poke, how far the, po how far the, the spoke comes out from the, from the, from the wheel. And that's a total generational thing. That's like one up each other because, oh, well, well we can all have these wheels now, but who can afford the ones that are that stick out, you know, two feet from the body. Um, and, you know, now they do it to anything they can. I, I've seen I've seen a minivan with them. Uh, you know, you see late model Cadillacs, which just don't work for me. But, you know, that's my opinion. I'm just old school. And now it's 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 morphed into something where several generations like it and people around the world like it. My cousin from Canada wanted me to get a set of wheels for their car. Uh, I've seen it in <laughs> Japan. Uh, the, uh, there's, there's, there's at least one Japanese town car slab and it's pretty, it's pretty wicked. I gotta say, I love it. Um, so yeah, I, I love the culture. There's a whole, there's a whole music scene around it. It's unique to Houston. Uh, it makes the town more unique. I like the music. I like, I love the cars and I had to make it into lemons pen penalties because, you know, when in Rome, you penalize as the Romans do. I think part of that though it kind of backfired because i know at least one team was so happy that they got to do it it was the uh the breaking bad guys on their bmw and yeah. he's like oh man i've been wanting to do this all weekend i'm so happy and they were zip tying their wire wheels onto there and they had like the the you make them put a screen in the trunk and go swinging through the the paddock yeah the swinging is like swerving right it's like yeah, is that like the thing it's like choreographed, choreographed ballet swerving. That's like two sine waves going back and forth down the down the road. Oh, it's, it's two. I didn't realize it was two of them. Well, like it should, it should be say, as many, it's as coordinated. Many as yeah, yeah. It's okay. like I mean, you know, like that, like in Oakland, where it started in Oakland with the street takeovers. They'll mm. do swinging takeovers. Well, they'll they'll shut down a road, and you know, you'll see like five to ten of these guys doing that, and you know, it is just awesome. It is just so awesome. Um, so yeah, that is, that is slab culture and it's, you know, it, it, it all started from the pimp, the pimp ride cars from like Superfly back in the day mm -hmm. and man, it's just turned into, it's turned into a phenomenon and I love it. Fantastic. Right. I, I, I noticed in the article that there's now like a disclaimer that I guess some Karens and Troys got mad that you weren't like, you know. Yeah, I've, you I've weren't, actually, uh, writing to the dominant culture. Is that is that a good enough way to say it? Yeah, that, that's that's a very politically correct, smooth way to say it. But yeah, we took we took a fair bit of blowback for that because uh, especially at Haggerty, you know, Haggerty is known to cater to certain classic car. Oh, old white man. It's OK. You can say it. There you uh, go. No, no, no. We got to be nice because they write his paychecks. man. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. 
dominant culture we'll go back to that yeah yeah and i mean i love the dominant culture but the problem is i love every culture and i want to talk about every culture um you know i want to talk about the you know the his, the hispanic kids now who take regular cab gmc chevy trucks and slam them and do all those cool things to them because you know that uh, they're called the tequaches the tequaches are super cool um, no, no, i'm excited to learn I about this one. what that was called because they, those are all over las vegas they 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 want short cabs short beds they put the yeah. biggest wheels they can on them and they open up the exhaust yeah, oh, it, that's it, it's awesome. basically, you know, it's basically a stock fight. Yeah. So this, this is a little bit of swanging. Um, and uh, it used to be the colors designated different parts of Houston, but I think we've gotten over that and we all, we all, we all like each other now. So it's not a big deal, but uh, yeah. Uh, and so that most, most of them will, will congregate around McGregor park, which is near the university of Houston, which, which, which is where I went to. And I still mentor there. So it's, it's all, you know, everything always comes full circle. It's really cool. Um, but yeah, we got a little bit of heat for that and people actually complained way above our heads and, and said, you know, and said things that I, well, actually I'm glad I didn't hear what they said, but, uh, that's the world we live in. The world, the world isn't fair and, and equal for everyone sometimes, but, uh, the more we talk about, the way different people enjoy cars, I think the better the world is. It's, it's totally what we say, like right in our intro, as long as you drive it hard and built it yourself, even you stupid, you know, slab, not slabs. Yeah. What do we call them? Hella flush. Kids, the hella flush hella kids. Flush. Hella flush. I, I don't get, I, they're all of my, I work at a college campus and they show up and they're like, Je Jeff, did you see my 300 Z 350 Z? And I'm like, <laughs> Ooh, okay, whatever, dude. As long as you like it, keep doing it. That's the way it should be. I yep. wish I, I wish everyone thought that way. Yeah. So all right, yeah, I I, I want to hear more later. We don't need to do it today about those uh those kids with the with the regular cab pickups. Yeah, yeah. But I, I want to yeah, hear more. I gotta about write that down. Yeah. Cool <laughs> Fords though, because you are a Ford guy. You've got your Continental Valentino. But I know from Mental telling me the story about visiting uh, a certain warehouse with you that there's a whole lot more other cool Fords around you around your life. Tell us a bit about those. Yeah, so it's basically stuff that me and my brother wanted ever since we were kids, uh, and so now that I can work on cars and I know a little bit, and my brother now that he's a doctor, he can actually afford to you know bankroll some of these little things that we do here and there. I mean, it's not like it's that much money to buy Fords and Buicks and things from the 80s, but we just do it. Um, so, yeah, uh, like I remember Mental actually really lost it when he saw one of the cars. I have a 1980 Buick Century Limited. And then I pointed to the hood and my God, the look on that guy's face, because he apparently, well, he just like me had never seen until this car the Buick Century Turbo with the 3.8 liter turbo, like the Regal of the era. That the, it is basically, nice. it's a grand national engine from the factory in a four door. Oh, excellent. Now I, I do have to caveat. It's not that cool because it's, it's the Malays era, you know, it, it's an 80 model. So it has car, it has carburation. So, you know, not like grand national cool, but you know, or the T type, you know, of the era. Yeah, it the, the blow-through carburetors—they always worked. Yeah, that was I mean, a great idea. But but that that car that engine in 1980 was stout and was very threatening to a lot of things that did not realize it should be threatened by it. Yeah, absolutely. Th that that motor turned into something special, but that isn't why I bought this car. Um, the only the, the only benefit to having a turbo in the 1980 century is that. You know, the 1980 Century had like 110 horsepower and it ran out of breath really quickly because Malay's era. But the turbo, it would give you all that torque and it would push, but then it wouldn't stop pushing. It would push very slowly and keep on pushing you down the road. And you're like, wow, this is a revelation because we had a 1980 Buick Century when I was a kid. It was my brother's first car and it was so slow the only way to make it do anything was to neutral drop it. And so, you know, we've never driven you know, those cars before. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a, it's, it's amazing how we've progressed from the late seventies technology of fuel and of, of saving fuel and saving and lowering emissions to what we can do now. But yeah, 
uh, we tried lots of things and the Buick Turbo was one of those. Uh, and, you know, I, I love this antiquated, terrible technology because it just shows how far we've come. Let, let me try my uh, Tyrone Biggins. You got any of those Mercores? How about I do you one better? I imported I imported a Ford Sierra. From the UK. Oh, I'm jealous now. Yeah. So one of my Air Force buddies who has a tangential connection to mental, I think, if I remember correctly, uh, Mike Solo. You kind of Solo, know him. Solo, yeah, Solowitz. Absolutely, yes. We 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 occupied Tinker about the same time. We were both connected to Justin Crenshaw. Which means and, I yes. probably have his phone number in my phone. Truth, for yeah, some exactly. Reason. Truth about cars. Yeah, that's awesome. Yes. Yeah, that was the connection. Yeah. So one day I was at my job doing the digital market, marketing thing that uh, Mental was talking about, you know, trying to figure out how to sell cars on social media, basically, or sell a dealership brand or whatever, however you want to say on social media. Um, and so Mike pops up in my chat on Facebook and he's like, He's like, look what I found. And I'm like, oh, wow, it's a Ford Sierra. It's the luxury model called the Ghia because I'm a man of taste and class. I don't know what that is. I'm a man man of taste and class. It was dark brown with brown velour. And when? And I was like, how did you find this perfect car for me? He was like, guess what? I get to ship two two cars back from Germany when I get back home. What? I can't remember exactly (laughs) what he said now, but it was basically like, I've when you send me the check, I've reserved one spot for this car and you, and I'm like, don't do this to me. But uh, yeah, he did. And I just had to have it. Um, so yeah. And now I have between a Thunderbird turbo and a Mercure parts car, I am putting together everything to make it a, a turbocharged four wheel disc brake, five speed manual, blah, 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 blah. Basically a pretty badass Mercure in a Brown Sierra. All of our ex ratty listeners are are fanning themselves. I, I, all a, a, we've all got a case of the vapors, vapors right now. Yeah, yeah it, it was funny at the at the Nola race. There was a there was a turbo two point three Mustang there, uh, and so I started giving them all the things they can do to cheat. And first thing they're like, "Why are you telling this? Is this a trap? Are you you're a judge?" And I was like, "No, I don't care because you guys, you know, you guys are going going against all these BMWs and Miatas and whatever, and you know." The the extra modicum of horsepower I'm giving you will not help at all. Uh, it's just fun to do it. And two, I'm building a car just like this, and it's very cheap to do it, and you can just do it and have fun. Uh, and so, yeah, it's a it, it's a the tur- the Ford Turbo 2.3 is something I've learned to really really like. It it kind of reminds me of a of a Super 2JZ, but with two cylinders lopped off. I mean, it's literally that good. That's awesome. All right. You're you're you kind of resto modding your MCM house there in Houston. I saw something you did where you you like found this molded glass waveform light oh, fixture. Yeah. You were putting this on there and you and you like you found it at a, at a thrift store and you gutted it and put modern LEDs in there, which sent me. I am now trying to find one of those. My my ceilings are very low. I want a Sputnik style one that I can do that to as well. Yeah. So what attracts you especially as a design person to mid-century modern i know what i like about it but i'm not a design person and then it you're in mid-century modern is from the 50s but you're obviously an 80s car person is there a connection or it's just nope i like this and i like that no the connection is i actually like it's called 70s postmodern. it's the stuff like brutalism it's the it's the pointy crazy you know there was actually a there's actually a photo that gets passed around every Christmas of Santa trying to trying to put a sleigh in a 70s house and it slides down and he can't get on the he can't get on the <laughs> chimney and he's like all these modern houses I hate them of course that doesn't mean anything in today's world of McMansions but that that's what it was going on so I actually like 70s and 80s stuff architecture just like my just like my cars um you, every once in a while you'll see the stuff actually who am I who am I kidding just watch any episode of Miami Vice and that's what I love. I mean, that's just all there is to it. But I'm also a pragmatic man to a certain extent. I wanted to live in a certain neighborhood. I wanted to, you know, be a certain a distance from my house or from my parents or from whatever. You know, I, I like being 10 minutes away from downtown Houston. So this neighborhood was the best and houses were built in the 50s and 60s. And at the time I could afford them uh, because, you know, they haven't 
spiked in value like they have now. So uh, yeah, I I pull I I pulled the trigger on this house. I was like, it's modern. If anything, I've I've made it a little '70s because I've kind of I've kind of gone heavy on the dark brown, and I'm pretty proud of what I've done. So yeah, uh, it, it's a '60s house that's masquerading as a '70s house. Right. And we did we did mine's a '70s house that's we're trying to masquerade in the '50s. We didn't mention this, but uh, again, our listeners, many of which are probably members of the Brown Car Appreciation Society on Facebook. I that sure hope a, so. Yeah, if not, go to the Brown Car Appreciation Society on Facebook, and and it's awesome. Yeah, founded by journalists and now run by me. I don't know how that all worked out, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, the Valentino is brown and brown, right? Kind yeah, of uh, brown and dark brown, right? Yeah, one of the nicknames I, I call for it is Caramello because it's chocolate. It's caramel. It's chocolate on top of caramel. Um, yeah, that, that car was the one that got me into cars. And it's just so weird because it's, it's turned into like, you know, like, it's the blender. It like takes everything you put together and turns it into everything that you want into one thing because I like luxury cars. I like style. I like unique design, blah, blah, blah. That's not, that's not the audience here. I know that. Um, it's also, I mean, it's a Valentino designer series and it's Brown. It's the coolest thing ever. But and when I was nine years old, I could not believe what I was seeing with that thing. I mean, it has lights in the ashtrays. I mean, <laughs> very important, very, very uh, important. America was Four so ashtrays. weird. Four ashtrays and they all have lights in them. Yep. Um, but then as I started, you know, growing up in my in my teens when the 5.0 Mustang thing was getting hot, I started realizing that a lot of that stuff just bolts up to my car. And I'm like, oh, I mean, that's kind of really awesome. So sometime in the late 90s, I started buying my I started buying parts of this car to make it into what I wanted to make it at some point when I knew I'd have you know, financial freedom, a job, a career, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Didn't know it was going to be something with, you know, websites and writing about cars, but I just knew I wanted to do something and I wanted to make a, a cool modified Continental. Um, the first thing I bought was a limited slip from a 1985 Thunderbird Turbo. Um, yep, there it is. Uh, oh, that's sexy. After the, after the limited slip, I mean, I, I, I got Coney shocks. Uh, cause the front suspension on that car ended up being donated to the Mustang SVO that some of you, some of you, some of y'all might remember. So I put SVO shocks on the SVO conies up front, Thunderbird conies in the back. Those are the Cobra wheels. Um, uh, a Stroker 331 with modern fuel injection, or not modern with nineties fuel injection, uh, newer fuel injection. Uh, the, the nineties, the uh, Mustang automatic transmission. I mean, I'm just going, I'm going batshit crazy on that thing. There's just no other way to put it. Oh, and it has a rotisserie restoration. I, they said, you know, you, you might just want to blow off all the rust on the other underside. Next thing I know, it's on a rotisserie being flipped upside down and sprayed and painted. And I'm it's like, amazing. okay. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you just, you, you don't, you don't, uh, the project managers have this phrase called scope creep. And oh, uh, we, yeah. we are well aware. We yeah, exactly. so, while you're in their itis. Yeah, it is the while you're in their itis. And I, you know, I, I, I'd like to say I practice what I preach because I tell lemons racers to do this all the time. Case in point, that turbo Mustang guys, I'm like, here, just cheat and do this stuff. No one's going to care. Uh, same things with me. I'm like, you know, well, they're like, well, you wouldn't do that. I'm like, well, I could show you pictures of, of, of my, of my colossal sinkhole that I'll never come out from under. And, you know, you, you be the judge of that. <laughs> if you're having fun, then it's all good. Yeah. All right. Let's flip to flip to lemons. Uh, how'd you end up working with them and you must love it or something, or you hate yourself. Uh, you've been around as a staple for uh, the Texas area for a long time. What, uh, yes. Yeah, so how did you get there? how did you start working? Uh, actually I touched on a little bit with that, with our, with the class a, with the overall winner from NOLA. Uh, so Troy and I, we pulled out a, a, a 240Z, the, what's that, the S30 body style out of his, out of his property and turned it into a lemons car with a few, with a few, a few other people from lo local friends and fellow people from the Z club. Um, and, you know, people were like, oh my God, that's so cheaty. And it was, but it's all, it's like, it's, it's the same thing I do with my Fords. It's just pulling parts from other Z cars and making it better. You know, a, a two, you start learning these things. You have a lot of fun. You get hooked. So I got hooked on our 240Z with a five-speed manual and four-wheel disc brakes and blah, 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 blah. Um, you know, now that car is worth so much money 
just on its own because you know you can't you can't go on Craigslist and pull up you know and 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 pay some guy two hundred bucks and pull a Z car out of their field. Those days are gone. Um, and much like those days have gone, I don't race anymore. I just decided that you know because I like the Lemons people. And I really, I really enjoyed hanging out with some of those people. I offered if I could just start doing things with them just on the side for fun in Houston. And they were cool with that. And it was actually really good because I was unemployed at the time. So I could not get, I could not, you know, spend any money racing cars because being unemployed kind of stops that. So it was a nice, it was a nice change to still be there while not having to spend, you know, four figures to be there. Uh, and then it turned into a real thing where I became a real judge and uh, traveled to NOLA, traveled to uh, Eagles Canyon, traveled to uh, CMP. Uh, and this year I get to do Pitt and I get to do NJMP, I think, if I remember correctly. Oh, so, yes. well, we're well, going to definitely we're be hanging see out soon, you. So. Yeah, okay. it's going to be fun. Awesome. So, yeah, bring, think, bring, a, bring a swimsuit and a towel. That good, huh? That's that's like a fun time. Mm, only to NJMP, not Pitt this year. But. Oh, you're not bringing the hot tub to Pitt? Oh. Well, it's only us going to. It's only the Mazda going to Pitt. Oh, all right, fair yeah. enough. All right, normally they have. Normally they have a. Oh, hot tub. and it's always just so cold. Yeah. yeah. How, how do you be... feel about man soup? <laughs> man soup sound interesting to you? I I hate I hate to say it, but thanks to other people with connections to lemons, I've experienced man soup. <laughs> yep. You know. We'll bring the carrots. I, I, I'm I, I, I'm kind of here for it all. It doesn't matter. I'm not, I'm not one of those judges who's going to make a big deal about things unless unless you squirt me with a water gun like what's happened to me last last week. Uh, so yeah, feral children. It all worked out. Uh, the children learned a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> the children learned a lesson. Boy. It was it was all good. I, I'm I'm sure they I'm sure they won't do that again without without anyone's consent. Uh, right, well, write this down. Do not ever shoot. Your lemons judge with le with water guns, no matter how hot it is, it's not a fun time. Yeah, and no matter how cute of a girl you are giggling, it, 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 it just doesn't matter. The judge is going to follow you back to your paddock space and talk to your parents <laughs> and, th and threaten your parents and say, hey, I know all the cars you're racing. I'm just going to go ahead and pull them all out and put them up on jack stands. <laughs> And then, and then the children become very well behaved for some reason. I just <laughs> don't get it. Uh, That's yeah. great. Um, yeah. We we kind of have a you know like two standard questions we ask all judges. I think we already got half of it answered. What not to do? Uh, yeah. What is the best way to care and feed Judge Sajeev at a race that a team can do? I usually eat pretty healthy these days because my body kind of has told me to in my forties. And, you know, I'm kind of upset by that, but I can still eat like garbage like I did in college when I'm at lemons races. So that's kind of nice. So I do enjoy lots of things with sugar and carbs and process this and that, you know, artificial, artificial nacho cheese flavor, all those things that are just not so good for you when your body tells you to stop eating them. But uh, I do it sometimes. But honestly, you know, bri bribes are nice. I, I, I do. I'm not going to say I don't love bribes because that would be really disingenuous. But I just really want to see see people get into get into motorsport and get excited by it and literally just do something that will make me smile. Uh, if you do a good theme on your race car, great. Uh, if you come up in a costume, great. Uh, it, it, you know, what? a long time ago, I had a belly dancer bribe. And, you know, that was, that was actually really, really awesome. I'm sure, I'm sure there's a video of it somewhere. It probably hasn't made it onto YouTube, but yeah. Uh, when, when a judge gets a belly dancer bribe, that's actually pretty awesome. Um, so for me, it's just be creative. You don't, you don't need to feed my need for sugars and carbs and highly processed foods. Uh, you know, make it your own, really, re really enjoy it because, you know, that's why that's why there's real racing and there's lemon racing right you know you know the old saying uh you know this is not racing in the traditional aspect this needs to be this needs to have your stamp on it it's not you conforming to something it's something conforming to you cool so, right. yeah 
So other ways people can make you smile is by bringing interesting cars. What are the things that are going to make you smile when they roll into judging there? Well, I, I feel like I'm comfortable saying this because you guys have said this because you cringe when you hear BMW and Miata. And uh, I mean, the problem is I know those cars are great and I do love those cars, but I just don't want to see them in lemons. I just don't. When I, when I see a BMW with a big header on it or just about any Miata, i.e. every Miata that doesn't that that still wasn't that doesn't have factory style shocks on it with, you know, adjust, you know, the adjustable camber things on it. If it doesn't have the, the factory stud coming out where the, where the factory shock would be um, um, when you open the hood, you know, you're just like, ah, oh, I have, it's one of these again. And I have to, I have to wonder how, <laughs> how hard do I have to penalize them to make it a, a fair, you know, uh, an equal playing field because, you know, plenty of spec, I'm sure there's still plenty of spec Miata racers out there with cheaty motors that, you know, would still be competitive even by today's power power to weight ratios. Um, you know, I'm not assuming they all do that, but you have to, you have to do a little handicapping. But man, when I see a Camry with an automatic, I am like the happiest guy in the world. <laughs> um, you know, the like the Montego that won IOE was great because that was literally 46 years and a couple of days ago, a car just like that picked me up from the ho- from the hospital when I was born. And I haven't seen a Montego in many years, like in person. And so that and gave me so much joy. Yep. But, you know, that that's a little too, that, that that's asking too much of people to say, hey, go find a Montego somewhere because, you know, that's a little hard. Now, if you wanted to get a 2006 Montego, which is the Volvo S80 derived Ford 500 rebadged Mercury Montego, I think that would just dominate class C, especially with all wheel drive when it's wet outside. I mean, come on, you have the Duratec, you have all wheel drive, you have, you have the, the mercury factor wave right in there. Um, yeah, that, that, that I'd love to see. And we haven't had, we, had, we've only had one Montego and lemons and one is not enough. Just, let's just put it that way. All right. That is- Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. All right. You talked about you're now getting out. You're, you're going to other races. You're going to pit. You're going to love pit by the way. Yes. Um, and, uh, yeah, you, you, uh, you haven't experienced the legitimate league of Nigerian biz or oh. the league of legitimate, <laughs> legitimate Nigerian, Nigerian, Nigerian business, businessman. Man. Um, prepare yourself. Uh, but you're, you're also going to love those guys. You talk about people that get excited. Where do you want to go? What, what, race interests you if you know you, you don't race anymore so if someone like all right well hey you know sajib come hang out with us and eat and we'll uh either let you drive the car or you can help out in the pitch or something what's and, a, and this what's doesn't a, have to be a lemons race this could be any race on the planet ah that, oh. there you go that's a good one that's a good yeah yeah i was thinking lemons first and one of these days i need to make it to barber and so that that's probably yeah, that's probably do. like the track the track of tracks for me um yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I like, I've get been there, to get Coda there early, was, get there like a day early. Cause you'll be yeah. too busy to see everything. I, mean, I would love to have an RV and like, and like, you know, and like catered food every day, just there, just like doing nothing just at Barber. That would be amazing. Um, but, uh, I honestly, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I, I really like these, you know, grassroots, gra- grassroots events. I've been to an event at Coda and I'm like, Coda's great. I mean, I, I was a passenger, on a, at a car in Coda and you know that track is f- fantastic phenomenal but eh, I don't know I just kind of want to be where where the RVs are and the and you know and the junk car racing I mean that that's turned into my thing now it it, it, it in a way it doesn't matter maybe, maybe maybe the east coast guys will change my tune on that but I don't think it matters where you are when you're doing lemons it's just it's just all awesome don't, don't worry on the east coast nobody is aggro nobody drives angry and nobody yells at the judge and blames the other cars or their tires oh that sounds like a (laughs) bold-faced lie from what i've heard but uh (laughs) but yeah i'm I'm hoping that maybe my 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 chill southern demeanor will uh will help these guys conform to, to my to my ways uh when I, when I was working for the dealership group, I had to deal with some aggro BMW guys at a BMW dealership in Long Island. And uh, 
Yeah, we we all saw it the same. That wasn't that I wasn't it, uh, all of them weren't guys. One of them was Amanda. You'll meet her at Pitt. Yeah, I was gonna say, was <laughs> is there a short girl named Amanda? Uh, she's, who is she's not at Pitt. More brutal than the rest of them. Uh, she's not like, say yeah, no. yo, yeah, yeah, yo, short short girl with a set of biceps and yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, how 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 bad can it be? I've already met Donnie. Donnie's a little scared of Amanda, like yeah. the rest of us are. You know. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Uh, Chrissy, I think you got one last bit. Uh, how can people on. find you if they want? If you want people to, to find you, if that's a thing. Oh, they can find me. I, you know, I'm just I'm not I'm not as popular as all the other guys who started in journal in automotive journalism back in 06. Uh, so yeah, I would love I would love the more the, the more people following me. Um, because I am in, in a previous life, di a digital marketing type guy, I claimed my Google knowledge panel. So all you have to do is Google Sajeev Meta and my face and my Instagram, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, Haggerty, whatever, all those show up right there and there because, you know, I've got those SEO skills, man. I can just do it. I just, I just make it happen. That's fantastic. People uh, get paid a lot of money to do things like that yeah i've gotten a lot of free stuff from local businesses because i offer to help them for free and then That's they fantastic. they are very they're very uh re receptive and yeah these type of things uh, from a business standpoint if, if you're doing anything locally you need to be ranking on all these things and making it work so yeah and if anyone any any lemons race wants to talk seo or digital marketing for their business i am happy to do that uh and maybe you know, we can I know make a, that a penalty i know a podcast that's probably interesting <laughs> to you about. <laughs> I love that. So I Googled just for the fun of it. The tags for the pictures in the image section are Mark 8, Lincoln Mark, Cars, Haggerty, and Bronco. Bronco? Oh. <laughs> I did not know I was reaching the, that that demographic of Ford. I thought it was really more of a Lincoln Mercury guy. Wow. Because yeah. because you're Mark 8, I have, I have often, you know, drooled over that car you let me drive it once it was freaking amazing that car did not come from the factory that nice Ugh. yeah I, I made it a little better but that car was very underrated uh when it came out uh yeah mm. yeah uh, to this day when i drive it i'm like the only thing that keeps it from being a new car aside from safety features you know it only has two airbags uh the only thing that really keeps it away from being a modern car is the fact that it only has four forward gears instead of eight or ten uh, you know, when you drive, it's like, rrr, rrr. <laughs> I, need, I need two gears between there. Come on. How spoiled yeah. we are today. We don't have four speed automatics anymore. Uh, but other than that, <laughs> it's pretty awesome. I was going to say, Chris just traded up his, uh, his, his tow pig. And the first thing he said is there are so many gears. It's so, so much gears. nicer. We don't yeah. have to play that game. Uh, oh boy. Uh, what else do you want to say before we wrap it up and move on to the end? Anything else anyone has around the table? Sock it to me. No, it's, that's great. We're looking forward to, to uh, actually, we'll be down in Houston for judging for the fall race or the November race, what it is. So, oh, we'll see. We'll the, see those two, they're married too. Oh, I didn't know Eric was, 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 was mixing it up. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, it should be fun. We're looking forward to it. And we'll see you at Pitt. Yep. Yes. I'm and looking Jersey forward, looking for looking forward to all those. Yeah. All, the all right. Thanks soon. Well, I believe, although we all want Chrissy to give us just the tip, that's not going to happen tonight. Unless because you got a, we have, you got a tip. I, uh, okay. Yeah. We have yeah, I've got all, plenty of them. Oh, sorry. I, no. We got it all on the spot with mental. All right. Real. So <clears throat> I've known Sajeev. You guys are actually going to get to see him. Now I'm jealous because you're going to see him at Pitt and at Houston. Um, Knowing that, and he said he expressed an interest in Barber, what's a race he needs to go to as a judge? Just just one of those cultural experiences. And was well, not Barber because that's already already mentioned. Uh, I'll say the ridge because the, it's in such a lovely place and it's a beautiful track. It's a great track to drive. I really enjoyed our trip out there. That was nice. The problem is that if he's going to go and not drive, uh, there's only 33 cars, which means it's probably going to, and everybody's sure. like really nice up there. So it's probably going to be really boring to so judge. He can do some, some, you know, um, yes, it to 
to uh, look at the track to make sure it's safe sure. before everyone before. starts. <laughs> you know, that's important. Um, very historical track in Connecticut called Thompson Speedway yeah. with yeah. wonderful ice cream and good golfing. Not that I golf. And Ooh. Sunday, the racing doesn't start till noon. So you can yeah. actually stay up really, really late Saturday night and not be that tore up. And watch, uh, watch might, random Belarusians fall into the fire. <laughs> this might be a uh, very there. It might be close to places where people might be aggro is really what it comes down to. <laughs> it, there's a lot of cars on track at that one. Um, I'm going to go with Sonoma. Uh, ah. Sonoma is always a very full track. Um, there is a great just mix of people and it's usually a pretty good time. There's it's usually just because there's so many people packed into a small place, I'd say pretty, pretty busy for judging. And you get to see a lot of racing from not from a bunch of different places. If you wanted to go around and take pictures and look, look around. So I'd say Sonoma has a whole lot packed into it. I, I think, yeah, sheep. I think Pittsburgh's a great track to drive on. I don't know if it's a real fun place to be in the past does you know no it's not, not that i you want the really league of, much it's yeah. cold it's like yeah. really cold like some years bring, it's br brutal yeah yeah but even though there's um the the wind blows up that hill uh right across the um tarmac so uh bring your snowsuit because it, <laughs> it, it <laughs> don't it, be the guy that shows up with no socks and chuck taylor's and a pair um, of holy jeans when it's sleeting it, it's sleet stormed like half of the, the, the time race. we were there that makes yeah. sense <laughs> yeah oh oh can i tell you guys one thing how i wound up at doing these particular races this year so eric asked me where i wanted to go and i think i said barber and whatever else and of course he didn't give me barber because i offered uh and he's like well give me an idea where else you might want to go and i said uh anywhere there are ford tempos <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Th those are our friends. Oh, and, and, yeah. and they are dancing right now. So yeah, right. shout out to Cheese Bolt. I'm sure I'm hoping I get to see oh, them. They, they them. are listeners. You just yeah. did shout out to them. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 I want to see them. If there is a certain Taurus MT5 five-speed manual that I could use as a judge mobile, you know, maybe, maybe we can do things there. Uh, that would that you know, I I said that I don't like bribes, but I would love an MT5 Taurus. Jersey is a you know if they still have that thing, they brought it last year for a judge mobile. Yeah, they did. Yeah, spectacular. Yeah, I would lose my mind. I, I would need a diaper. <laughs> I would definitely need a diaper. <laughs> That's right. funny. I'm gonna throw this one at you from a racing perspective, no. From a weather perspective, no. But given your attitude on interacting with the racers and just trying to experience as much different things as the, Button Willow. Go to the butt. Oh. Uh, it's it's because you are ten miles from the middle of nowhere. Uh, it's it the the paddock is usually a really good time. Oh, and it's it's, it's just and it's a good time. You know, you're you're patting you just walk around and meet people, and it is a very varied and different uh, kind of assortment of crew. Chris and Chrissy came out there and they melted. And then they were uh, covered in dirt. I was going to say, as long as you like dust and dirt and you can just like that crunch, like in your, like oh, in yeah. your mouth, like in your the mouth, in your you're mouth. like, yeah. you can't like super fine dust. You can't get. wash it off. You know, like if that's a good time to you, then button willow is perfect for you. So it's a great, but it's a great crowd of folks that go always go racing. Sure, sure. Sounds like my digital marketing trip to Lubbock, Texas. So yeah, I'm down for that. Uh, <laughs> I get, I, 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 say. I, I and my apologies to everyone in Lubbock. I do really like Lubbock, but yeah, I was there during during one of the storms, and I opened the door, and my rental car had dust in it. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'm good for that. I mean, yeah, and, and, I mean that's one thing I really enjoy as a judge is that if I have the energy, I want to go walk around when the when the track goes cold and, and talk to all these people. And no, that and, that's Connecticut. I'm gonna tell you because that. The, the paddock the, isn't very big, the, so you don't the, have to walk. Exactly. There. Everyone's on top of each other, and That's you don't nice. have to race until noon, and it's a uh, little Caligula-like in the evening. <laughs> it's a little... There's also only one shower. I, I, <laughs> I'm not saying it happens every year, but one year somebody caught a knife. I'm just saying. And it might have been his, it might have been his teammates. I'm not sure. <laughs> Yeah, well, lots of racers at least threaten to do that. So, yeah, uh, that adds up. Oh, boy. Uh, 
Uh, thank you for coming. I think this has been great. Um, I'm going to hit pause on the music there and say um, we're going to see you soon. Uh, thank you for coming. And I'm going to ask the crew, do we know what we're covering next week? Well, it, I think we might be a week early on this, but uh -huh. I, I yep, think so too, are. right? Yep, we are. Sometime oh. in the next two weeks, we're definitely doing a, a uh, pit race preview that should be prognosticating about potluck prep. But anyway, um, we'll, we'll, well, we will pimp the, we'll that the pimp, the pimp, the potluck in any way. Don't know what's happening next week, but uh, there is a potluck happening at pit. If you're coming, please sign up. Even if you don't know what you're going to bring, just sign up and say, I'm going to bring something just so we know that you're going to bring something. All normal rules apply. Bring it warm, bring yeah. a spoon. Um, but we're having a potluck. And PSA, Saturday. make sure you're signed up and paid by the end of this weekend. Ooh. So, yep. True. Do that. Jeff hasn't done it yet. Hasn't signed in. Oh, sorry. Damn, damn team. Even though I sent you an invite. You did? Yeah. Yep. I'll have to look at that. <laughs> well, thank you, CG, for coming here. Thank you, all of us, for listening. Cheese Bolt, I hope you're listening. Uh, we also hope everyone enjoyed this week's edition of Everyone Racers. We we'll hope you join us in the world of driving, racing, and building because. Everyone can be a racer, even you. If you enjoyed this podcast, subscribe, caress the like button, the thumbs up, the talk to us down there in the doodly do. Send us an email, whatever you can do. Uh, you can hit us up on the Facebook page, everyone racers, or email us at everyone.racers at gmail.com. You can text mental 484 243 0455, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, even on Reddit slash e1r thanks again and until next week keep the shiny side up unless you got them swangers then it's shiny on all the sides i don't know everywhere everywhere right, keep the wheels down everybody <laughs> <laughs>